Hey guys, Colin here with Main Street Wolf, and today I'm going to be chatting with you guys about why investing in real estate is for dummies. No, not really. It's not for dummies, and that's not what this video is about. It's going to be about why I think investing in stocks is, in my opinion, better than real estate outside of rate of return. Because as you look at different types of research online, you're going to get a wide range of results saying real estate has higher returns or stocks has higher returns. And based on what you want to hear, that's usually what you're going to lean towards. Completely taking out the aspect of rate of return, I consistently see across the numbers that stocks have a rate of return anywhere from 7 to 10 percent after inflation and real estate uh, depending on where you look also ranges anywhere from like 5 to 12 percent. So let's just say they both return 8 percent and they have the exact same rate of return. I'm going to be talking about kind of why I still prefer stocks over real estate. Uh, and once again, this is all just my uh, humble opinion, right? First things first, uh, when you hear about investing, you hear about active investing versus passive investing, right? And everyone always wants passive because that's like this golden word where passive means I don't have to do uh, diddly, I can just sit on my butt and collect checks. And with real estate, if you're buying rental properties, in my opinion, that is not truly passive because as a landlord, you have to deal with terrible tenants, you have to deal with repairs, you have to deal with, even if you're not doing the repairs yourself, you have to deal with setting up contractors, or if you want to save money and get a higher return, right, you do the repairs yourself. So you may get a call at 3 a.m. to fix the toilet, or you know it's a hot day and you got to fix the AC, all this stuff that I truly don't want to deal with. With stocks, I can literally get on my phone, click a button, and boom, I just bought a share of Apple, and I don't have to do anything else. I sit back, and the only thing I need to do is check the stock price, you know, 10 years later, and see that hopefully, you know, like went up five times or something. For me, stocks is way more passive, and that's a big uh, bonus in my eyes. I can easily, well, I guess, let me say, here's the second point, diversification. When you're told real estate investing is diversified if you're you know, buying different properties around the city, around your state, are you truly diversified? I don't believe so because you're investing in the same geographical area, so if something happens, Let's say I'm buying up real estate here in Chicago, where I currently live, and all of a sudden the city goes bankrupt. We're known for having a ton of debt for a city, we're always running a deficit. And something similar to Detroit could happen where the city actually has to default on the debt, and then all of a sudden property taxes, which are already high, become even higher. Real estate would suffer, you would see prices come down and then all of a sudden how you thought you were diversified because you had multiple properties actually because you're in the same area everything's tied to the same thing so the appreciation when times are good is tied to one area as well as if something bad happens so for real estate if you are investing in either single home properties or commercial buildings on the same area where you live because these are managed I believe you're less diversified. You can take care of that by investing in REITs instead of investing in actual property. Invest in a, a fund that do, does all the managing um, itself, but usually with REITs you're going to have uh, slightly lower returns because you're going to have property fees, or not property fees, but management fees, right? For managing all the REITs. But REITs would be way more hands off than. What I'm talking about, real estate investing, I don't really want to get into the difference between that. I'm talking buying stocks versus buying real estate and managing it yourself, not, not REITs. That's not what I'm comparing it against. Diversification. Stocks, I can buy an ETF that is literally 500 companies. 
Those 500 companies are either based in the US, they can be global companies, and with a single share I can be diversified across different industries, different companies, a lot of different factors, and it's across the globe. All with one share, instead of buying a $300,000 property that's in one geographical area. The stock, I can buy one share for 200 bucks and get 100 times the diversification. The third item that I want to talk about is the fact that with real estate, I feel like you need a higher amount of starting capital in order to get started with investing. So with stocks, I can log into my Robinhood account, I can deposit $300 and boom, I can start investing in companies. With real estate, if I want to buy a single property, what's up Tiger, say hi to the camera. Uh, there's my cat. So if you want to get started in real estate and you need you know, $20,000 for a down payment, that's a completely different story than having $600 to buy some stocks. The capital requirement to get started with real estate is much higher than stocks. And for me, as a younger investor, I prefer stocks just because it's a lot less capital, as well as you can actually use brokerages like M1 Finance to buy even fractional shares of larger companies. So a company like Amazon, where it's like two grand for a single share, you can actually buy $100 worth and you can proportionally buy the share with the amount of money that you have, which I think is really cool. Unfortunately, you can't really do that with real estate uh, when we're talking about buying actual properties. Less capital, we covered diversification, and we covered uh, the passive aspect of the investments. Another item is the transaction fees. With real estate, like I said, a down payment, you have to come up with a certain amount of money, let's say 20% of a $300,000 house, so I have to save up 60 grand in order to buy a property. Now, when I actually go to buy that property, there's closing costs, there's fees associated with that transaction, and it co can cost me anywhere from, you know, three to six percent of the total purchase price of the home in just fees. I don't, I don't get anything out of that. It's just to convert and pay uh, transaction fees in order to buy the property. Now, with stocks, you have apps like Robinhood, you have apps like M1. Where everything's free you can even use uh, a brokerage if I had 60 grand and I wanted to buy stocks it cost me anywhere from absolutely nothing to uh, let's say five to ten dollars for for each trade so if I wanted to buy ten thousand dollars in six different companies I could do that for 30 bucks or 60 bucks or absolutely nothing that's fantastic when you're talking about transaction costs with real estate in order to cover those transaction fees you basically have to hold on to the property for five to seven years and stay in the same area in order to you know essentially uh, cover those transaction fees and absorb those fees the fifth item that I want to talk about is the fact that with real estate one of the the items you'll hear about that's a benefit is leverage you're using other people's money to borrow 80% of the home's value at a low interest rate and then you pay it off after 30 years right? and you hear that as a benefit now what's great about leverage is in you know good times and bull markets that leverage increases your rate of return but the downside is the fact that when times are bad then your your losses are also exaggerated it's uh it's a double-edged sword with leverage and with stocks usually all you're going to lose is the capital that you're putting in you're not uh, unless you're trading on margin which i would advise against but if you're you know just have a ten thousand dollar account or a hundred thousand whatever it may be the only amount of money that you can lose is actually what you invested so with stocks you kind of have a cap on what you can lose whereas with real estate 
you can actually lose more. You can buy a house for 300000 and then find out, oh, you need a new roof. You spend uh, twenty grand on that, and then all of a sudden the market crashes, and your mortgage is much higher than what your house is worth, and then you try to sell it. turns out that you actually have to basically come up with cash in order to get out of the deal or you can actually go bankrupt basically destroy your credit for years which you'll have to build up again um, so with real estate you're leveraging yourself and there's a chance that you hurt yourself with that leverage stocks you don't have to worry about leverage so as long as you're not trading on margin and the most money you can lose is just the capital amount so those are the five reasons that i prefer stocks over real estate definitely let me know what you guys think down in the comments below what do you prefer real estate versus stocks what is your preferred choice of investing if you like this video please give it a thumbs up consider subscribing we talk personal finance we talk fintech and we talk crypto thanks guys again and have a great day